The title of today's devotional is Crossing the Jordan, an Obstacle or an Opportunity. Our scripture reading, two chapters, Joshua chapter 4 and chapter 5. I do want to invite you to open your Bible and turn with me to Joshua chapter 4 as we go through today's scripture reading. Well, with the promise of the Lord and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant, we read in the scriptures that the people had removed from their tents to pass over Jordan. Now, when the priests bearing the ark had stepped into the waters, we read in chapter 3 and verse 16 that the waters receded and they rose up upon a heap and the people passed over against Jericho. Now, in your Bible, chapter 4 of Joshua, we have in the first of nine verses what I would describe as a lasting memorial. Now, think about it. What a glorious event in Israel's history and one that the Lord commanded Joshua to memorialize in a physical memorial of 12 stones. Joshua commanded 12 men, each representing a tribe, to pass before the ark and take up every man a stone upon his shoulder. Now the weight of the sides of the stones required the men to carry them on their shoulder. And so they went before the ark and they brought them to Gilgal where Israel would encamp after crossing the dry riverbed into Canaan. Then Joshua placed a second memorial of 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests, which bear the rock of the covenant, had stood. Now notice then Joshua chapter 4, verses 10 through 14, what we have here is the miracle, the crossing Jordan. All the people we know in the scriptures passed over, including 50 or rather 40,000 men of war from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. Now that day, the Lord fulfilled his promise, for he had indeed magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And we read in chapter 4 and verse 14, they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. But well, chapter 4 and verses 15 through 24 now records the closing of the waters and the building of a monument of stone. The Lord then instructed Joshua in verse 16, Command the priests that they bear the ark of the testimony and that they come up out of Jordan. Well, then the priests came up out of the midst of the Jordan and the soles of their feet were lifted up unto the dry land. We read that the waters returned into their place and they flowed over all his banks as they did before. Now think about that evening. The people encamped at the plain of Gilgal east of Jericho. There Joshua took the 12 stones that the men had, had removed from the Jordan and built a memorial, a lasting testimony to future generations. And so when their children would ask, what mean these stones in verse 21? Their parents would instruct them, as you look at verse 22 and 23, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan from before you until you were passed over as the Lord God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we were gone over. Now that brings us to Joshua chapter 5. And I've given the title of this chapter, A New Land and a Renewed Covenant. Now notice then, chapter 5 and verse 1 is an interesting description of the demoralized adversaries, the enemies of Israel that were watching the waters of the Jordan separate. We read in chapter 5 and verse 1, all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of the Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, they heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in any more because of the children of Israel. In chapter 5, verse 2 through 9, we have the renewing of the covenant of circumcision. Now, circumcision had been observed in Israel during the wilderness, or had not, rather, been observed during the wilderness wanderings. However, in the new land, the Lord commanded Joshua to circumcise the men of Israel. And so circumcision, you understand, served as a reminder of Israel's covenant with the Lord. It was a testimony 
that the Lord had rolled away the reproach of Egypt, chapter 5 and verse 9. And so we ask the question, what was the reproach of Egypt? And I believe it was the reproof of the faithless generation. The generation before them, they had refused to believe the Lord and they had turned back from the promised land. The name of the place of circumcision would be Gilgal, meaning rolled away. Rolled away what? Rolled away the reproach of God's people. Well, chapter 5 and verse 10 through 12, we have the celebration of the Passover. Now, remembering God's grace and his goodness, Israel reaffirmed the Lord's presence and they observed the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then the next day we read, chapter 5 and verse 12, the provision of manna, the daily bread, ceased. And they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Well, drawing to a close, notice if you would, chapter 5 and verse 13 through 15, here we have a heavenly vision a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. Now, when Joshua came near the city of Jericho, obviously looking at the city and looking at the walls of the city, we read in chapter 5 and verse 13, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in the land. Joshua bravely went to the man and he asked, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Then the man introduced himself, saying in chapter 5 and verse 14, Nay, but the captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. When Joshua sensed it, he was in the presence, not of a man, but of the Lord himself. We read in chapter 5 and verse 14 that he fell on his face to the earth and he worshiped and he said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the Lord, the captain of the host, ready for battle, said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where all thou standest is holy. Well, here's a closing thought for you. What made the ground where Joshua was standing, what made it holy? And the answer is, it was the presence of the Lord. When Moses had drawn aside to see the flaming bush in the wilderness, we read that he had removed his shoes because he understood he was in the presence of the Lord. Now, Joshua did the same. With his shoes removed, Joshua bowed his face to the earth he was ready to receive his marching orders for the siege of Jericho. I invite you to go to heartofashepherd.com. There you'll find today six Bible study questions that will invite you to dig a little deeper into our scripture reading. And thank you for being a part of Heart of a Shepherd. God bless you and bye-bye.